Welcome back to Helen Nigeria. Now, our guest is here with us in the studio, and we're going to be looking about skincare. And I'm particularly excited because she's a medical esthetician. She is. Um, she has a postgraduate medical degree with merit in clinical dermatology from Queen Mary University in London, and she's been practic practicing aesthetic medicine for five years. She's a chief esthetician, physician, and medical doctor at Belfiore Medical Lecky. We have with us Dr. Uju Rapu. Yay! Thank, thank you, you for joining us. Me. Thank you. Thank I'm you very, very excited, you know, that we have you today and that mm -hmm. we're having this conversation. Medical aesthetics is something that we've not been used to, yeah. but it's really fast rising in Nigeria. So I would ask you, how well is this being accepted? Um, I've been doing this for about four years, and at the start, people were definitely like, what are you doing? Nobody does this here, you know, no one's going to patronize you. But I think I just found something I was so passionate about, so I just sort of pushed through, and I find in terms of informing people, telling people why I'm doing this, what we're correcting, you know, the processes, people are becoming more comfortable, and we find people are sort of, they're more open to it now, so they're not traveling out as much, so they're actually, yeah, they're more accepting of what I'm doing now. Okay, so just so we don't put our listeners mm -hmm. or viewers actually yeah. um, in the state of fakeness. Uh -huh. What is medical aesthetic? Okay, so my definition okay. is aesthetic medicine is a subspecialty under medicine. So I'm actually a medical doctor who has postgraduate training in aesthetics. So I know there's a lot of people sort of medical aesthetic, medical aesthetics, and they're just calling, you know, mm -hmm. all over. But my definition is a subspecialty in medicine that covers Corrective skincare and non surgical cosmetic procedures, or anything to do with the looks and beauty. So, I currently specialize in skin. I have a postgraduate diploma in dermatology, and then I perform non surgical procedures, so anti aging treatments, non surgical lipo, nose jobs, fillers, Botox. Wait, did you nice just say non surgical lipo? Yeah, so there's a lot so that's of non thing. Mm -hmm, it's an, a, a treatment called injection lipolysis, the so people that don't want to go under the knife. Mm. Me coming. It's an injection that sort of kills fat in stubborn areas. And then I encourage people to exercise as well. So there's lots of treatments. I basically say come in, any cosmetic concern, and we're usually able to sort it out. So for me, that's aesthetic medicine. That's oh, interesting. Yes. Now, my question is, lots of us are, you know, interested in these conversations from yeah. afar, but when it gets to us, we're like, nah, mm. side effects. So are there no side effects to these treatments? All treatments have potential side effects. I'd always say that. But I think the most important thing is the person providing the service. So I always encourage people to go for a consultation. Ask the person questions. Are you qualified? How many have you done? So in terms of professionalism, the person who knows what they're doing, there's fewer side effects. But with all treatments, there's potential side effects. Some sensitivity, bruising, swelling. So we'd always talk you through this. But I think... Death. In terms of the non-surgical, the risks are definitely... I'm not cutting anybody open. So um, not, non, not many would have a side effect of possible death, usually swelling, but it always talk you through what to expect, how many days to expect it for ice, things to take to help a little bit. So there's also the question of cost, because uh -huh. yeah, a lot of people will hear that I'm going like, oh, this is nice. Did you I know? need this, but then they'll say, how affordable is it? Do you know a lot of people are spending so much money on creams that are damaging their skin? Bleaching creams? Exactly. So at the end of the day, I think, um, I don't know, I feel cost is relative. So what are you... What matters to you? What are you going to prioritize and spend on? So some things are a little bit more expensive than others, but I don't mm. think cost is something you should. Okay, I'm going to find a cheaper option in anything to do with mm -hmm. medicine. So it's more about professionalism. So. All right. In the course of your practice, we're looking at skincare. What would yeah. you say are some of the most common skin problems that people in Nigeria experience? Definitely acne and hyperpigmentation. So I'm having darker areas on my face, my forehead is darker, my face is darker than my body, and then acne. Those are the definitely two most common complaints we see in the clinic. Okay. okay, so when you actually rent the services to people, mm -hmm. do you prescribe um, the kind of skincare products they should use? Is mm -hmm. that also included? So I do more, I say I do prescriptive skincare. So most of the products I would prescribe are correcting something. They're normally like medicines in cosmetic products. So usually you'd have to come talk to me. I'll tell you how to use them, when to use them, time of the day to use them, and we'll do reviews. So in my mind, it's like I'm putting you on medication. So I work mm. with prescription skincare. The products you ne might not find on the shelf or you need to get through a physician. Mm -hmm. All right, so now let's talk about the um, basic skincare, the mm -hmm. things that every young lady or young, every person really mm -hmm. should know about skincare. You talked about how we experience acne and sunburn. Mm -hmm. But then they'll tell you, dermatologists will tell you that you need to do exfoliating, mm -hmm. toning, moisturizing. Yeah. Before we talk about the, the types of skincare, I want us to you know, clarify what really is toning. Now, uh -huh. from what I know, I, I know that toning should be tightening of the skin. Mm -hmm. But these days, people are lightening their skin color mm -hmm. and say, no, I'm just toning my complexion. So what really is toning and what are the other skincare procedures that one must know about? I'm going to be honest with you. 
I don't know how people are just using toning for now. Because there's the process of using a toner to clean the skin. But what I'm seeing is that people are using toning when they don't want to say bleaching, but they're really requesting the same thing, but using to say I'm trying to tone the skin. I'm understanding it as I think they're trying to even out the skin tone. But because most people are complaining my skin is darker, you find that in terms of evening the skin tone, they are hoping you are lightening it a little bit mm. with the word toning. So I think they're trying to even skin tone, but I think most of them are talking, referring to lightening without saying bleaching, or there's sort of you know, stigma around the word bleaching. Okay, so... Still on the skin, mm -hmm. there's some people who have said they've used natural elements mm -hmm. that actually helped them tone, mm -hmm. not light, mm -hmm. like you said. Is it also okay to use, because I know somebody who went through um, a six-month treatment of Honey Strictly mm -hmm. every day for an hour, and then she was honey, just... Honey, just Honey. Yeah, she was uh -huh. doing Honey in my what house. Happened? And she was getting lighter, <laughs> and we're wondering what was happening to I her. I Honey is mixes of my um, I, I don't, I don't uh, know what she was doing, but it was working. Yeah. Six months, one hour a day, mm -hmm. and... We saw her just going mm -hmm. shades away from what we knew her to be. Well, so, the way you deal with her, did you see what she was applying? Family member. Well, okay. I would expect <laughs> Um, We have some natural brightness or products that we say are depigmenting. They break down pigment, like arbutin, kojic acid, you may have heard, phytic acid. They're normally what people would push as organic lighteners. They do work similarly to lighten skin, but in large doses, they're just as harmful to the skin. Mm. So people might be saying, I'm using natural cream, but they're using a kojic acid at a concentration that is literally almost the same as hydroquinone. So that's number one. Number two, you don't know these people are taking tablets, taking injections. So we, you know, the, there's other things available for skin lightening. Honey is not a skin lightener. Okay. So I think... Some people might not be telling you what they're using. They might be taking tablets. They might be taking glutathione injections. I was going to mention glutathione. You, know. you know, they just say, I'm just glowing. I'm happy. They're taking it's happiness. Yeah, what, so. what, what <laughs> manner of happiness? All right, let's look at the ba ba basic um, tips or basic mm -hmm. procedures that everyone needs to go through when caring for their skin. So I, I mentioned toning initially. Mm -hmm. So there, there's also the moisturizing. Let us through what... Basics. Um, I know there's a lot of information around do this, do that, but... The basics are really you should wash wash your face twice a day. Um, cleanse in the morning, cleanse in the evening. So a gentle face wash. I'm not too fussy with face washes except the person has something they're dealing with like acne or something and I can normally recommend a prescriptive face wash. The sunscreen is so important. People don't realize they should but you should use the sunscreen every morning. So I tell people... Even your when you're not going under the sun. The sun's rays, so it's not the sun we run away from but the sun sends out invisible rays of energy called UV light and they penetrate clouds, penetrate windows, penetrate glass. Wow. Once you have windows in your house, wake up in the morning, wash sunscreen. Evening, most sunscreens moisturize. So if morning time, I just say wash and use a sunscreen. Evening time, wash, moisturize. In terms of the other products, vitamin C serums, hyaluronic acid, I usually, they're nice additions that do things for the skin. So you can normally bring them in. And I normally tell you which product is good at certain ages. So we know in terms of aging, vitamin C products are good to encourage collagen production. Older people, hyaluronic acid serums are good. They add volume, retinol. So I like putting those ones in the evenings mm. because you find your skin is making more use of these products as you're sleeping. So I, I like to call them the additions. But the most basic I tell everyone is wash twice a day and a sunscreen. Can you switch morning. skin types? So people who have, who have challenges, mm. you know, with, oh, maybe I have a very dry face or I have a very oily face or mm -hmm. I have very dry skin on my body and I want to, you know, find a balance or switch. Yeah. Is it possible? In terms of skin type, we're thinking mostly oily skin, dry skin, combination mm. skin. So you can normally tell oily people, people have oily skin, are like dabbing their face all the time, complaining the skin is oily. People that have dry, and then they tend to be more prone to acne. People that have dry skin, they look scaly sometimes. They're more prone to eczema. Combination skin, they usually sort of say, okay, some areas oily. Um, it's sort of hormones that detect how much oil your skin is producing. So I thought it was a skin type. So it's now to find products that you're happy with. So someone has oily skin, I put you on oil-free products. Mm. Someone has dry skin, I put you on very thick moisturizing products. So it's to find products that work with your skin type as opposed to changing. And then people that have oily skin, they complain a lot, but oily skin ages the best. So I tell people, so just get your primer mm. and be happy with the oily skin. Okay, so then, we, yeah. can, we can say the same procedure can be used for pigmentation? I treat pigments similarly, but then I treat patients very individualized. So based on what they're coming, how long they've had the pigment for, if there's anything else causing pigmentation. So there's lots of things I do for treating pigmentation, but the most important thing is sunscreen. And then we always, I'd always go through with all patients what is causing the pigmentation. <clears throat> so you know if there's anything at home making it worse, we can stop. But in terms of the treatment, skin is skin, so we treat similarly. We just put you on products that your skin is happy with. Finally, mm -hmm. before we let you go, what is the relationship between what you take in and mm -hmm. what your skin looks like? 
water is great so hydrated skin ages well it's sort of less prone to wrinkles and lines so it helps it's nice to keep hydrated um vitamins are nice for the skin so we're always sort of going through this pollution where there's stress and these things will affect our bodies so vitamins are nice so they always sort of keep healing the skin vitamin c is a great vitamin for skin as well so there is a link between what you take in obviously and eating bad foods dairy products are bad not so good for the skin guilty so, yeah <laughs> so it's, it's nice keeping a nice healthy diet with lots of water i feel yeah. like we're definitely going to have a part two of this conversation we'd love to have you again this has been really enlightening thank you so much thank for you joining for having us. me how can people thank follow you. you if they have more questions they want to ask that we can't ask because we're constrained for time um we have an instagram page bell fury underscore medical b-e-l-f-i-o-r-e underscore medical um, our website, belfiorieng.com. You can email us, and our phone numbers are sort of detailed on our Instagram All right. page. Okay, thank you so much for joining thank us. Thank you for having me. We have been speaking with Dr. Uju Rapu, Chief Aesthetician and Medical Doctor at Belfiore Medicals, and she's been talking to us about skincare and skincare types. We hope that I've been able to pick a thing or two to help you, you know, get the best of your skin. To enjoy more of this, our Ugonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.